Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. All right, guys, let's do this problem that says replace the force system by a wrench and specify the magnitude of the force and couple moment of the wrench and the point where the wrench intersects the XC plane. So notice that the XC plane is this plane right here, denoted by this axis and this axis. That being said, this problem is long and time consuming but it's not that hard, you just have to break it down and make sure you don't make any mathematical mistakes along the way. So let's get started. First step with all these problems is always to find the sum of the forces. Now, the sum of the forces are given by this force right here, which is the x component of this 200 Newton force, and this force right here, which is the C component of C, this 200 Newton force, then the 400 Newton force, and then the 200 Newton force. And I'm also going to call this force A, and I'm going to call this point A. I'm going to call this force B, and I'm going to call this point B, and I'm going to call this force C, and I'm also going to call the same point C. Now that being said, let's get started. The first thing you have to do is find the sum of the forces. So. 200 times 3 over 5 gives you the x component of the force A. In the i, 0 in the j, and then in the k is 200 times 4 over 5. Put parentheses in the k. And that is the c component of the 200 Newton force or force A. Now the 400 Newton force or force B it's minus 400 in the i, 0 on the j, and 0 on the k. And the 200 Newton force is minus 200 in the j, 0 on the i, and 0 on the k. So when you add all of this together, you get the resultant force, or the sum of the forces, which is equal to minus 280 in the i, minus 200 in the j, plus 160 in the k. Step one, find the sum of the forces. Step two, find the magnitude of that force. The magnitude is given by 280 square plus 200 square plus 160 square, all square rooted. And when you calculate this, this is equal to 379.47 newtons. Cool, so far so good. Now we need to find the moment of the wrench. The moment of the wrench is given by two formulas. And the first formula is the one that is a bit of a pain to calculate. It's not hard, it's just time consuming, but we're gonna do it. So the moment of the wrench is given by a vector r that goes from A to a point P. What is that point P? Well, we're trying to find where the wrench intersects the XC plane. So let's call that point P, and the coordinates are given by xc because in this is in the xc plane so let's say that this point is at an arbitrary point right here calling this point p and this distance is the x that we're trying to find which is this x and this distance this distance going up is the c distance which is the c we're trying to find so a point from point a oops what did i do Sorry about that. Okay. A point from point A, which is right here, to point P, cross F of A. And remember, we're calling this force F of A. Okay, I told you this. And the 400 is F of B, and the 200 on the right is F of C. So, as I was saying, a vector from A to P cross F of A plus a vector from B to P cross F of B plus a vector from C to P cross F of C. So these three calculations we have to find and then add, add, add all of them together to get the Cartesian vector, which is M of R, which is the 
moment created by the wrench at this point. So we're going to solve each of these and then we're going to add all of, the, all of them together and this is why it's going to take a little bit. So try not to make any mistakes. I mean, I know that's easy to say, but you have to go very slowly and be very tidy with your work. Cross f of a is equal to i, j, k. Now, r from a to p in the x, we're going this much. And this is equal to x minus 3. It's easy to think that it's 3 minus x, but you got to pay attention that it's x minus 3 because you're going towards the origin. So it's backwards. 0 in the j, we're not moving in the, in the y-axis, in the y-direction. And in the k is c minus, and this is 0.5. Now, for f of a, we have 120 in the i, which is this force right here, 0 on the j, and in the k we have 160, which is this force right here. So, rewrite first and second column, x minus 3, 0, 120, 0. And this is equal to positive diagonals, again, be tidy. So, first one has a 0, so there's nothing there. Second one is j times c minus 0 0.5 times 120, and that is equal to 120 c minus 60 j. Now the negative diagonals, this is zero because it has zero, this is also zero, but the third one is negative 160 times x minus 3 times j, which is 480 minus 160 x in the j also. Let's put a plus here parenthesis here. So now these are both in the J, so you can add them together and you get something that looks like this. Uh, 420, right? 60 minus 1, yeah, 420 plus 120C minus 160X in the J. This is all in the J. Oops, parenthesis there. Okay, so this is all in the J. This is just the first vector. Set a new page, and let's do the second vector, which is R, B, P, cross, F of B. This is equal to I, J, K. Now, R from B, which we said B and C are both here, to a point P, and remember I said that this is X and this is C. So from here, all the way to here, it's going to be this vector. And that is given by, in the x direction, I'm moving x amount of times, which is this right here. In the j direction, I'm moving minus 2, which is this right here. And in the c direction, I'm moving c minus point, oops, c minus point 0.5, sorry. Which I'm going down, remember, I'm going down. That's why it's not 0.5 minus C, C minus 0.5. Don't make that mistake. Now, F of B is given by minus 400 in the X, C on the A and the Y, and C on the C. So we rewrite the first and second column, X minus 2, minus 400 and 0. And let's solve the matrix. This is 0. Uh, this you can actually multiply, which comes out to be... Let me see, this is 200 minus 400 in the C. And this is times J. And then let's do our negative diagonals. This we can calculate, which is negative times negative 400 times negative 2 is 3 negative, so it's a negative. And that is minus 800 in the K. This is 0, and this is 0. Hopefully you guys are being in your paper much tidier than I am being on this tablet because that's how it's easy to make mistakes. Now, now that we have the second one, let's do the third one, which is RCP cross F of C, which is equal to I, J, K. Okay, so this is the same vector because B and C are in the same point. So this is X minus 2 and C minus 0.5 
and now f of c is 0 minus 200 and 0. Rewrite first and second column x minus 2, 0 minus 200. Okie dokes. Now positive diagonals, this is 0, this is 0, this is minus 200 in the x times k. Negative diagonals, this is 0, this is minus times minus 200 times c minus 0.5 times i, which is equal to 200 c minus 100 times i. Let's put a plus here. And then the last one is 0. And we have our third vector. Let me turn the page of my notes. So, m of r is equal to the sum of the three vectors that we calculated. The one I calculated in the previous page, this one, and this one. So you got to add all the i's together, all the j's together, and all the k's together. And it looks something like this. In the i, we have the 200c minus 100 in the i. In the j, we got 420 plus 120c minus 160x in the j and we also have in the j the 200 minus 400c in the j. In the k we have minus 800 in the k and we also got a minus 200x in the k. So let's add the s with the i's, the j's with the j's and the k's with the k's and we get that this vector this vector is equal to 200c minus 100 in the i plus, uh, let's put parentheses here, 620 minus 280c minus 160x in the j plus negative 200 x minus 800 in the k. That is a k, I swear to God. Okay, um, this is the first formula that we need for the moment of the wrench. Now it starts getting a little easier. If you didn't make a mistake up until this point with all these matrices and all this solving, it starts. this is where it starts making more sense. So, new page. Hopefully you wrote that down. If not, pause the video and write it down. We know m, m of r, and we have another formula that m of r. Remember I told you there were two formulas to find in it? And the other one is the moment, the magnitude of the, the moment of that the wrench creates, times the univector of the force that we found at the beginning. The univector of this force is given by the sum of the forces over the magnitude of the force. And we found these two values already. The sum of the forces is this Cartesian vector, minus 200 in the j, this is an I, I swear. And that was my cat attacking the box. Sorry about that. Okay, minus 200 in the J, plus 160 in the K. All over 379.47, which is the magnitude of the force. So when you divide each of these each of these uh, vectors, then you get minus 0 0.738 in the i, minus 0 0.527 in the j, plus 0 0.422 in the k. So now that we have the univector, and I told you, the univector times the magnitude gives you mr, you know that mr is equal to the same univector, 0 0.738 times m, in the i minus 0.527 times m in the j plus 0.422 times n in the k. And remember, we already found the mr in the long Cartesian vector that we found before. And we have this new version of mr, this other version of mr, which is right here, plus the one that we found on the previous page. Let's put previous page right here. So what you got to do is you got to set this equal this value equal to the i on the previous function, this value equal to the i in the previous function, and this value equal in the i, to the i of the previous function. And I'm going to do that in the next page so I have more space, and you'll see what it look like, looks like, and it'll make more sense.
hopefully. <laughs> All right, so the first one is in the eye. In the eye, you know that minus 0.738m is equal to the i of the first function that we found, which is 200c minus 100. So, just to reiterate, where did this value come from? This value came from this first function, Cartesian vector. This is where the second value is going to come from on the second function, and this is where the second value is going to come on the third function. I want to make sure you guys understand why we did all that work. Where did it go? Okay, here we go. This, this, we're going to call this equation one. Equation two is minus 0 0.527, 527m is equal to 620 minus 280c minus 160x. This is the second equation. And the third equation is 0.422m is equal to minus 200 in the x minus 800. And now notice, we have three variables. We have the magnitude of the, of the range. We have c and we have x. Three variables, three equations. So mathematically, we can solve these equations and find the value of each. And you should know how to do this by now, but I'm still going to do it. So because I know, you know, sometimes you guys forget because you don't practice math for, for fun. Like me. So C. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite function number one by solving for C. When you solve for C, you get something that looks like this. Minus 0.738m plus 100 all over 200. So C can be rewritten as, or I'm sorry, equation one can be rewritten as negative 0.00369 M plus 0 0.5. So we rewrote equation one. Now what are we gonna do? We're gonna plug in the C into equation two. So remember equation two looks like this, 0.527 M is equal to 620 minus 280, 280c, which I'm going to replace by minus 0.00369m plus 0 0.5 minus 160x. So we're going to solve this. Minus 0.527m is equal to 620 plus 1.0332m minus 140 minus 160x. And when you clean this up, you get minus 1.5602, 1.5602m is equal to 480 minus 160x. This is the function that we get. This function looks very similar to function three. So to make painfully obvious, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get equation three and I'm gonna multiply it by this function, which is negative 160 over 200. You might be wondering where this function came from. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the value of this X cancel out with the value of this X. It's something, it's how I like to do systems of uh, two equations. It's just my preference. If you multiply function three by this fraction, this is how function three will look like now. It's minus 0.3376m is equal to 640 plus 160x. So I multiply all these values and this value right here and this value right here by this fraction and I made equation three look like this. Now if I add this equation and this equation together, look what happens. These two cancel out minus 160x plus 160x is equal to zero. And this is minus 1.8978m is equal to 1120. And now you solve for m, m is equal to minus 590.16 newton meters because it's a moment and we have m. Now if we get m, 
and we plug it into equation one, which I actually can plug it in right here because it's easier, you get the value of C, which I'm gonna write right here. Let me go all the way over here. So C is equal to 2.68 M. Okay, and I got, I got that by plugging this value in to here. And then you can also plug this value in to something that gives me the X, which this one is a good prospect. And I, I yeah, I plug, I plug the value M right here. Sorry, I couldn't find the M. And then you solve for X, and you're gonna get that X is equal to minus 2.75 meters. So this is the final answer for the point. And this is the final answer for the moment. Let me reiterate the C, uh, sorry, the X C point is equal to minus 2.75, 2.68. This is the point in the X C plane where this wrench is turning this body. The body has a magnitude of 594.16 Newton meters. And at the very beginning, I found the magnitude of the force, which is equal to 379.47 newtons for the magnitude of the resultant force. Final answer.